A topic that's fascinated me is what was treasure hunting like before metal detectors? I'm finally getting some answers. Okay, so this is from the Brooklyn Daily Eagle, and the date was December 3rd, 1913. Let's take a close look and zoom in. Title is Sift for Treasures, and don't have to dig deeply in the sand, but they get little treasure. Rockaway Beach, December 3rd. A score of men were working on the beach hand coal sieves in search for hidden treasures. They would dig the sand for a depth of two or three feet around posts and sift the sand carefully. They expected that their efforts would be rewarded by the discovery of coins and jewelry lost by summer visitors. No discoveries were reported, although the sifters were energetic and persistent. It is stated that when the fingers of bathers are wet, rings slip off easily. Now we have textual evidence that this was a known fact in 1913. Coins will also fall out of the pockets of men who stretch themselves out on the beach. The coins and rings are quickly buried in the sand, but the action of the water washes them against the posts where they stay. The only proof available of the correctness of this theory is the fact that all of the men were digging holes around the posts and seemed to have a pretty fair idea of what they were doing. Oh, that answer where they get asked, found nothing? Like, that's the classic treasure hunter answer right there. Whenever somebody asks me, what did I find? I'm like, bunch of coins. You know, because otherwise it turns into a show. You have to show what you got. If you claim it, why claim it? So here's another example. Same newspaper, different decade, 1930. Sands at Rockaway yield lost treasure. Beachcombers invade shore front to search for money and valuables. Visitors left. Some find as much as $25 daily is report. With the arrival of the fall months, beachcombers have again put their appearance along the shore front at Rockaway, and according to many of them, success is attending their effort. Although called by the natives at the peninsula's clam diggers, the diggers do not bother with clams, but search for buried treasures lost during the summer months. Many average as high as $25 in money a day, not counting jewelry, trinkets and odds and ends, which they unearth. The diggers' equipment consists of a spade and sieve, and their activities along the beachfront reminds the stranger of some mining community. A hole is dug and the sand cleared out is thoroughly sieved by the diggers, whose normal ranks this year have been augmented by hundreds of persons out of work. Due to the prosperous season that the peninsula enjoyed, the combers are experiencing good fortune, one of them declared today. Okay, let that process for a second. That second article was 1930s. Okay, first... I'm going to have links to this article in the pinned comment and the video description. I'm going to post them on my website, iratemetaldetectors.com, so you could download copies of these two articles that I uh, am talking about today. But it sure seems during the Great Depression, when people were desperate, they would go treasure hunting out of necessity. It wasn't, I don't think you could call it treasure hunting. I looking for coins, and it was widely known. You go to the high-volume beaches, and you might get lucky if you dig in the right spot. It's kind of like what we do at Dead Horse Bay today. In closing, this is the very beginning. I have been going down the rabbit hole with metal detecting history, and we have more videos coming out because it's absolutely fascinating. But anyway, I've got these two articles. Look for the link in the video description or on the pinned comment, and you'll be able to download these two articles. Thanks for watching, everybody.